There's a place not many non-British people know about. In fact, a lot of British people don't know about it either. And it's called the Isles of Scilly. And a lot of the history of these islands actually goes back to when they were first mentioned by the Romans, when they first discovered the islands. But the reason why it's so significant in today's time, at least as a horticulturalist and somebody who cares greatly about plants and botany and whatnot, as I'm assuming most of you guys do, that it has such a unique climate, quite unlike anything else on the planet. And it hosts a garden, a space, a horticultural space, that has over 20,000 different species of plants. And I wanted to do a deep dive on the Isles of Scilly. Now, granted, the climate of the Isles of Scilly is very mild, and I'm not going to go into a great depth and a great description of why this is the case. I've been over this in other videos. You can see um, the rest of my channel if you'd like to know how the Gulf Stream affects most of the British Isles and northwestern Europe. But it's more important in a way because it's a jewel of horticultural prestige, and it's sort of proof of... The power of the temperate maritime climate pushed to its extreme. It's proof that the British Isles is a lot more than meets the eye. And only 28 miles off the coast of Cornwall, this is a horticultural haven. It's so important for the enrichment of botany, of general plant studies, and it, more than just its extraordinary geography. These islands are beautiful, and they serve as a natural incubator for thriving horticultural life. The archipelago's fragmented layout plays a key role. Each island, with its rocky outcrops and gentle slopes, creates natural windbreaks that shield plants from the full force of the Atlantic gales. This intricate geography allows even tender plants to flourish in the open air. Bear in mind, plants survive here that would not survive on the mainland of the UK. That's quite extraordinary in itself. Granite. The bedrock of these islands does more than provide stunning scenery. It absorbs heat during the day and releases it at night, moderating temperature fluctuations and creating a more stable environment for plants. Valleys and sheltered coves act as a natural microclimate with the larger ecosystems. Here, warmth is trapped and humidity is retained, mimicking conditions found in far more temperate regions in the subtropics. This is why you'll find plants like Agapanthus and Proteus thriving alongside traditional crops. The proximity to the sea plays is a huge part and we've been over this in other videos but a quick reminder the surrounding ocean acts as a thermal buffer preventing extreme cold and ensuring a mild climate year round frosts are extremely rare here and in some years there's less than one day of recorded air frost now when i say that it's like a temperate maritime climate on steroids i mean it I live in the western part of the UK and we have quite a mild climate already, but the Isles of Scilly takes that to the next level. You can have plants here like Cycas Revoluta that you can grow on the mainland, but sometimes in certain winters you would need to protect them. In the Isles of Scilly, you really don't need to do that. And you can have more tender cordline species like Cordline Stricter, uh, Cordline Banksy. You know, you can have all types of dwarf species which find a perfect home here. But the Isles of Scilly doesn't stop here. Rare and exotic plants from around the world flourish flourish in this subtropical paradise. Uh, it's crazy that the amount of South African plants you'll see in the botanical gardens there, it's like another world. But one of the best examples of this island's success is Araucaria heterophylla. And as you can see here with mine, I have to protect it over winter by keeping it in the shed and have I have to also have bubble wrap for it, which is kind of annoying. But then if we look over to the Isles of Scilly, we see a huge specimen of this Araucaria heterophylla, which is the Norfolk Island pine. And for those that know, this is a, t a tropical plant. It is a tropical pine that is found in the Pacific Ocean on the islands of the Norfolk Islands and it's very hard to grow on the UK mainland because it's quite sensitive to frost so to see this growing in such a high latitude on an island right next to the UK is absolutely phenomenal and I think this gets overlooked for how like incredible this is from a botanical point of view and it shows that the temperate maritime climates when pushed to an extreme can really surprise us.
There's also a few cases of uh, Cyathea medullaris, which is also known as the black tree fern, and these are native to the North Islands, and often the extreme northern parts of the North Islands of New Zealand. And to find this growing in such a high latitude again is really remarkable. Now, for gardeners, the collection of plants from the Proteaceae family that grow outdoors all year round at Tresco Abbey um, is probably one of the biggest attractions there on the island. And in particular, a plant called Leucandrum uh, argentum is uh, part of this family and it is quite a well-known established plant to these islands and it serves as again a, bota a botanical checkpoint for this uh, temperate climate that they can get away with such a it's not particularly frost sensitive but it's frost sensitive enough that it can't really exist in the masses you see it on the UK mainland so it's another distinct botanical advantage to the island. There's also a few Ropalostalises, which is the Nico palms, uh, which are native to uh, North New Zealand, and the Shatnam Islands, which are known for their tolerance to cooler climates, but still, to grow them in such a northerly latitude is just insane to me. And to have them at such a mature specimen is, again, incredible. And that's not even to mention the amount of Washingtonia robustus, the Phoenix canariensis, all present on this island and it's not that they're not on the uk mainland it's just that these guys survive longer and experience more well in their view a healthier more ideal growing season since there's so little frost if at all now apparently there's a bismarck palm there so i'm gonna have to see that one day when i eventually do go to these islands but it wouldn't be too far from the truth considering these Bismarck palms can take frost and the Scilly Isles don't experience much frost at all and not only that they don't have extreme cold days so most of the time it's above freezing in winter and the problem with a lot of palms is that they can deal with like sharp drops in temperature but they don't like prolonged exposure to cold. It's quite hard to get an exact comparison of a similar climate to the Isles of Scilly because it's very unique. Uh, even for the British Isles. So the climate of the Scilly Isles is probably most comparable to that of the Azores, which is a Portuguese archipelago in the North Atlantic. And I say this because both are heavily influenced by the ocean, resulting in mild winters and slightly cooler summers well, since the Azores is obviously quite south um, in terms of its latitude, but it still has relatively cool summers. They have high humidity and relatively even rainfall throughout the whole year. But obviously the Azores are warmer due to you know this more southerly latitude with winter temperatures averaging 13 to 16 degrees celsius compared to 8 to 10 uh for the silly isles and the summer reaching 22 to 26 degrees versus 15 to 20 uh for a closer temperature match the channel islands or Brittany. Uh, which obviously is in France, which also shares a uh, maritime climate. And you have to remember, at the latitude of 49.9 degrees north, globally fewer than 1% of land areas at similar latitudes experience a comparable combination of mild winters, cool summers, and near total absence of frost. Most regions at these latitudes, such as parts of continental Europe, Asia, and North America, experience much colder winters with significant frost and snow. Even within the, the UK, the, the Sillies are unique, as their mean winter temperature approximately eight degrees celsius and fewer than five days of frost or even just air frost annually contrasts sharply with the national average of 33 frost days furthermore the annual temperature range of around 10 degrees celsius is among the narrowest in europe highlighting how statistically exceptional their mild oceanic climate is even within the temperate zones with over 140 of these islands in this archipelago it just goes to show the significance of this botanical site blending historical legacy conservation and botanical experimentation it was established in the 1830s and the gardens showcased the potential of the island's mild climate allowing for the growth of all sorts of subtropical and the mediterranean plants that we find in the warmer regions and it's basically like a living laboratory the gardens play a crucial role in preserving rare and endangered species offering a unique environment for plant diversity through the varied microclimates it's an educational resource attracting global visitors and inspiring other botanical institutions while contributing to global horticultural knowledge and plant conservation efforts. We also have to remember how old a lot of these plants are considering the initial horticulturalists when they came back to England from far in a field brought them to these islands to sort of preserve them because they knew how mild the islands were. So there's examples of really old palms and uh, all sorts of exotic plants dating back to 1987 when they started taking pictures and showcasing this to the world and a lot of these were lost in storms uh, that came after this but it just shows you that a lot of these palms are quite literally 
hundreds of years old. There's also a great example of a stick insect, uh, most noticeably the smooth stick insect and the prickly stick insect, which are not native to the UK, but have randomly been introduced, whether by accident or by intent, to the Isles of Scilly and parts of the southwest of Cornwall and Devon. The sheer scale of plant species that can be cultivated on these islands is really quite motivating for me, at least as a horticulturalist, and it gives me a bit of inspiration to maybe be a bit more of a zone pusher and it's always great to uh, love our native plants and allow them to flourish and thrive in their native landscape but we also have to remember there's only 1692 native plant species according to the 2020 plant atlas for the united kingdom the british isles so for a garden like Tresco Abbey, which contains possibly up to 20,000 plants and different plant species and cultivars, that maybe it's a good idea to broaden our horizon a little bit with what is available to this island. And I'm not saying that there's anything wrong with the native wildlife, that, that should always have its place. But at the same time, I don't think there's anything wrong with experimenting with new plants and seeing what new landscapes we can make in our gardens or maybe in new horticultural sites because it's all about education and conservation of endangered plants too. But it just goes to show how important the Isles of Scilly is, how important the Tresco Abbey Gardens are for developing new research methods for protecting critically endangered plants or just showcasing and educating others and, you know, people who are budding uh, horticultural knowledge for new exotic plants and things further afield it's it's great and i'm really happy that we have this but anyway it's pretty late i hope you've enjoyed the isles of silly archipelago as much as i have and i'll see you later